Um, why would we have a, a Qantas Media Award award for best blog site? Well, the simple answer is because Qantas wanted it and want Qantas to, uh, you know, that definitive kind of um, recognition place where, you know, from journalism, etc. For some time, I've been interested in the whole uh, internet media and uh, the blogging phenomenon in particular, but, not, but also the judging on internet stories and internet mm -hmm. news sites, etc. So it's the whole medium of the internet. But the blog is part of it. And so that's the first answer, is that they're really interested in it. The second thing is that it's another example of how blogging as a phenomena is becoming more and more mainstream, and so it's getting recognized by the fairly prestigious places like Quinton. But these are media awards. Absolutely. And one of the sort of cornerstones of the media, one would hope, would be accuracy. And I know that, that out of the 10 mm. internet or 10 mm. web-based awards, most of them are focusing on accuracy, but the blog site doesn't really depend on accuracy. Oh, I think it will. No, I think accuracy is a core component of you know, whoever wins it, you know? Um, but let's just take that unpacked media for a minute, you know? I think we've got to expand our view of media. Media is just a way in which you communicate with other people. So that's, you know, I don't want to get all philosophical about it, mm. but this idea that media, in terms of traditional kind of analog media, newspapers, you know, television, uh, radio, Radio, etc. We've just really got to throw that away because user-generated content, as it's now known, is the absolutely dominant theme of the internet, and it is the social and cultural phenomena that is just mm. rampaging through the internet. All right. So, what do you look for when you're judging a blog site? Because the the nature of blog sites mm. is they are unique. Well. The I can only speak for myself because it's an emerging field, and I could refer to other people. And but just to try and keep it, you know, focused on how I would do it or how I'm about to do it. The first thing I look for is voice. Now, any publisher will, will tell you that is the fundamental thing. When you pick up a manuscript, you know, you want to publish somebody's novel or, you, or even their, you know, philosophic treatise. You're looking for voice. You're looking to see can this person carry. Sustain. I don't mean just on a Tuesday, but every Tuesday. Can they do it over and over and over again? And have they got something to say is the second thing. Now, the key thing about blogs, though, actually, Paul, is not to see it as being a media event where they're trying to get hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of people to look at. Mm -hmm. Really, blogs are about trying to get the 200 people that you want to influence or 500 people. Do you see what I mean? If you can get to your thousand people, for instance, your peers or people that you respect and you wish them to hear what it is you've got to say, then that is a phenomenally powerful thing. Well, is one of the components to judging it, though, the number of people that are attracted right. to not it? Not at all. It doesn't matter. It's the relevance and reach of it. So if it has relevance, it could have, um, for example, a number of kind of mainstream uh, industrial, you know, mm -hmm. industrial, you know, um, business people have a blog, but really all they want to reach is another 500 people. So it's not about the number of people, it's about the number of, uh, it's a number of, it's about the effect the of effect the effect of the power, the power effect. And that's the other thing, blogs are almost entirely about opinion. You know, <coughs> they have very strong opinions. <coughs> and so that idea of balance kind of mm. goes out the window. So you have right-wing blogs, left-wing blogs, the political It blog. comes to the core of the blog, though, why someone bothers to do it. Why, why does someone want to influence others, albeit a small group, <coughs> with their own opinions? Because people, right back to the coffee age, or, you know, to coffee society, 18th century, London, etc., we are in, um, <coughs> we're in a really kind of uh, melting pot of mm -hmm. cultural and social change, I believe, in terms of media. And people have got a lot to say. It's as simple as that. All right. All right, Paul, well, at some stage in the future, we might tell people how they can start a blog. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Do we need any more? Heaven forbid we should have more of them, I suppose. Well, there's 60 million now. Yeah, yeah. maybe there's enough. Maybe we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll go do that. <laughs> All right, Paul, thank you very much for joining us. Paul Reynolds. OK, news is next, and then the classic London OE. Our travel segment shows us the new ways Kiwis are making the journey. That's before night.